18 long days after a youth soccer team wandered about three miles into a cave in Thailand and found themselves stranded when typhoon rains caused flash floods. Yeah, and I'm happy to say tonight all 12 boys and their coach have been successfully rescued after more than two weeks brought to safety by Thai Navy SEALs in a rescue mission that lasted three days and did claim the life of one of the SEALs who was leaving oxygen tanks along the path outside. Now all 13 are expected to spend a week in the hospital recovering. And when the news of the rescue attempt broke, we reached out to Brett Hemphill. He's a very experienced Florida cave diver who knows the perils the boys and the rescue teams face. Today he was on the road and he pulled over and spoke to me via Facebook Messenger to give us some insight into this daring rescue mission. He was Facebook friends with that Thai seal who died, and he also knows two of the divers who helped get those boys out. He describes what they likely went through. When you're cave diving and you're in zero visibility and you're trying to multitask and maintain your breathing and your composure, it's, it's more like wringing out a, a towel. I mean, by the time you're done, you're exhausted. But, you know, it's, 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 it's a very psychological game. So I think the, the most important thing they had to you know, work with those kids were is just, you know, probably using nose plugs in addition to masks and just, you know. Now he says hats off to everyone who helped prepare those kids for the journey they made out of that cave and for everyone who risked their lives getting them to safety. Hemp Hill knows all too well how easily that rescue could have gone bad. Our Ann Schindler tonight has a closer look at the dangers that can come with cave dives. <laughs> It's a very primal fear. Being in a small space that's filled with water horrifies some people. Claustrophobia, deep dark it's place. It's a deep dark place. <laughs> Dr. Andrew Pitkin and his colleague, Brett Hemphill, dive Florida's vast network of underground caves, mapping and exploring spots that few have ever been to, and even fewer would care to go. Some divers would look at that and go, you guys are just crazy. To fight the current, divers use underwater scooters that allow them to swim for miles. Some caves run as deep as 400 feet, with passages so narrow, the divers can barely squeeze through. It might be like somebody who's, you know, free climbing El Capitan in Yosemite, as opposed to somebody who's just going for a hike you know, and looking at the nice scenery in terms of the logistics and the, the effort and the level of experience involved. Eagle's Nest in southwest Florida is often described as the Mount Everest of cave diving. It's very easy to get deep quick, which also adds to the potential, potential danger for this site. A placid pond on the surface, it plunges 200 feet before branching out into narrow and complicated tentacles. It has earned a reputation for lethality, a fact reflected in signs above the surface and below. There should be no misinterpretation of that. The signs say that no in certain terms, the, the, they, will, they will not come out alive. Such was the case in October, says Hernando County Sheriff Al Nienheis. Two experienced divers went in, both failed to surface. Like many sports, very dangerous, and if you make one mistake, it can have very uh, tragic consequences. He got stuck in this restriction right here. When the bodies were found, only one diver was wearing his underwater breathing unit called a rebreather. We do know he got stuck. He got stuck so badly that at some point he decided it would be advantageous to remove all of his equipment and literally left it laying in the dirt, completely intact, completely functioning. The divers made it nearly two thirds of the way back, sharing a single breathing apparatus. But air and distance weren't the only challenges. When he decided to, to, to ditch his equipment, he became hopelessly buoyant. Literally had to make his way across the ceiling. They were the ninth and 10th divers known to have died at Eagle's Nest. And just four days after we visited, another death, the 11th. Because the caves are so dangerous, the job of recovering those bodies falls to people like Brett. It doesn't really affect you until you get home and you go to bed and you wake up and you see your kids the next day or you, and, and, and then you reflect. For me, it's helped me. I don't want to be that person. The risks, while real, aren't enough to counter the pull of discovery. The whole sensation of being where nobody has been before. There's a real uh, personal 
sense of accomplishment. We're pushing ourselves mentally and physically, but we're also discovering something as we move forward. The team has mapped dozens of miles of previously unexplored cave. And doing some spectacular video so you can see the karst aquifer we live on. They hope the information and the beauty of the caves helps build respect for the value and fragility of the Floridan aquifer, the state's prime drinking water resource. It's an amazing place. In the world we live in, truly the best way to protect something is to document it.